Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Yeah, Tuesday, and a good Tuesday morning to you. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope everybody had a great trading day yesterday. Uh, let's go ahead and do what we do each and every day, looking at futures markets to identify potential breakout trades and reversals from an educational perspective. Going to be a little bit shorter session today. Uh, I'm only going to really cover the four major markets, uh, the ES, the NQ, crude oil, and gold. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm uh, going to uh, cover these four major ones today uh, and then uh, and then maybe look for some updates as we as we post them throughout the day. So in the S&P yesterday I talked about you know I say it over and over again and uh, the importance of the time of the day that a level is formed. And the S&P put that and showed that yesterday brilliantly as our 2 a.m. level uh, that was formed in the European market open uh, really held strong yesterday. We got a really nice rally out of that zone. Uh, and so we've traded to the bottom of it, so I've got to let that go. But do me a favor, leave me comments in, uh, down below if you were able to take advantage of this move higher. Uh, you know, ultimately that was our, our strongest entry uh, back at the origin of this move up right from the uh, right from the from the European market open and so we got a really nice move out of that level if you didn't get into that thing uh, you know looking at this uh, on the bigger picture time period call it the four hour chart we are still uh, we're still overall wanting to be buyers right I still want to be a buyer uh, it still makes sense to be a buyer I'm still in a bigger picture upward channel um, you know overall we've got a nice big move to the upside uh, I would be just slightly aware of the resistance that's up above us um, in this in this four hour area. And I'm coming all the way back to here and really putting my line right there. Um, this resistance that is above us, there's a little wick over wick level here on the hourly. We had chopped through here. I'm not saying that we won't pen, that we won't go through there. Matter of fact, I think that we probably will. But just be aware that we may get a little pullback. And if we do get a little pullback to give us a chance to get in, um, I may have to go down to the the 15 minute chart to be able to find okay where would I get in if we do get a decent pullback. Now, looking at these, you know, none of these areas are areas that that make me jump up and scream, hey, great area to, to get back in. Um, and so I'm a little bit more cautious this morning. So I, I, what I don't want to do is chase it and feel like I'm missing out on something because this is the kind of market where you can chase it. Um, and so I think now could be a good opportunity to oh, allow price to hit somewhere up here and, and on a decent pullback, maybe get long on a candle to candle style. Uh, on the hourly chart. None of these are really giving me strong entry opportunities. Uh, and so I'm going to hold off just a little bit on forcing a trade. You may get an opportunity in here, this little wick over wick level on the hourly chart. So keep an eye on this wick over wick level on the hourly chart. Um, I'm not saying that's going to be a level that I, you know, I don't feel as strongly about that as I did about yesterday's you know move back to the 2 a.m. reversal um, but this one still could hold and you could get a little day trade out of that level um, going forward in the Nasdaq so in the Nasdaq we had a potential breakdown level below 6838 uh, we, we see that we didn't come into that area and then our 2 a.m. reversal hit and we did okay it's actually stalling a little bit at this area of resistance up above us so we're stalling at this supply zone this area of supply, but we've hit it once. Now we're trading into it a little bit. This could actually lead to another opportunity for, for kind of catching that next leg up. So if you do want to trade it to the upside, but you don't feel like we're getting enough oomph to get there, uh, maybe the NASDAQ area is a better is a better play. And it's above this 69.85 on a breakout to the upside. So if you do want to take it, um, you may get a 69.85 breakout to the upside as a chance to get long. Uh, in crude oil, so in crude oil, we had a nice trade uh, back down into this level. Now, I had set this level up as a confirmation style entry, um, meaning that it's got to trade halfway into the zone in order to activate the trade. Uh, it did not uh, It did not activate the trade for me, although I know a number of people did uh, take this one. So really nice, uh, really nice move off of that level. I'm going to pull that level off the chart. 
and we got a really nice rally up out of that level. Matter of fact, it came all the way to my 15 minute level and popped right through it. So it actually, um, you know, hit the uh, hit the profit target and then some. So leave me a comment down below if you're able to catch that uh, that that uh, crude oil long. That would be awesome to hear about. But now as we're continuing, you know, to march higher, we can see that we're we've just put in a, a high upper wick on this hourly chart may give you another another bite at the proverbial apple if you will and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wrap my lines now around this area in here uh this is if you look and see this is right around the uh, european market open it's not a fresh level though now why isn't this level fresh you may look at this and say no it's fresh no it's not because of this wick right here and then coming back down right if i look at that on a 15 minute chart zoom in on that a little bit more clearly it's a little bit easier to see here right price went all the way up and then we came back down into it so if you if you're more conservative you can take this as a confirmation style entry um, i like the time of day that that was created i i kind of lean on these european market opens as as opportunities to get long and that may be a decent opportunity right down in there uh, and then gold so in gold uh, we're still between our major areas i thought that we would get a decent little reversal here at uh, at the uh, at the 2 a.m. Uh, time fair, time frame, unfortunately, we traded into it last night in the uh, in the midnight hour uh, and popped right through it. There's no there was no stalling. There was no nothing. Now the only thing to say is that we did have basing before the level. So if you look at this basing here, you know that basing before the level. If you think about what that does, you know if if this distance is my risk from here to here is my risk. This basing before the level. Uh, means that it's now setting up basically for a one-to-one -one trade right so while we had set the level up ahead of time you know oftentimes the level just when it, when it gets there it doesn't present the same picture the same profit target the same score so you know a lot of people say well can't i just do set it and forget it trades you know my answer is no i, I am not a big fan of set it and forget it and the reason i'm not is because the arrival into the zone is so important um, and specifically when I talk about the arrival into the zone, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking of basing before the level. Because if we base before a level, think about what that does. What that's allowing it to do is to build up orders of the opposite ilk to thrust it through the zone and it reduces my reward to risk ratio. So it's a, you know, when, when we're looking at a trade, we want to take, uh, we, we want to we wanna have a top performing trade. T-O-P, trade, optimize, plan. Um, we, you know, we, we score our trades based on a probability score and a, and a basing before the level absolutely ruins that probability score. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at your trades. If something is basing coming into that level, do I really want to take it? So um, those are kind of the areas that I am most concerned with for today and the areas that, uh, that as, as we look at it, you know, I think the S&P and the NASDAQ both give us a, a pretty decent opportunity. Uh, to get long, uh, if we if we get a, a you know an, an area and the Nasdaq really has the breakout level, uh, which is a little bit better than the S and P's level. So, I'm going to wrap up a little bit earlier today. If you've got any questions, please feel free to send us an email, uh, and we will gladly get back to you. Support at tradersarmy.com. Thank you so much, everybody, and I will see you again soon. Later.